Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Athlest Zafan, Scorch Fountain, where we're currently witnessing our little rest coming to an end, and the dwarves are getting back to work. And they had better hurry, too. It's early spring in our second year, 1165, but by the end of this year, we're going to start seeing a lot more migrants here in Scorch Fountain. And as of yet, we've hardly broken any ground at all on our actual fortress. But before we dive into things, we do have a few fortress matters to attend to. I suppose we'll start outside the fortress where a migrant wave has just showed up. Looks to be six of them. Wonderful. Nothing too interesting. But no matter, they'll all be very handy. That brings our population up to 25 dwarves, nearing our temporary 30 dwarf cap. And now that they're settling in, we're going to take a look up here in our temple, where we can see our necromancer, Moldath, who really is starting to come around, getting to be a well-appreciated member of our small fortress. And also the guy has earned himself a nickname. Most of the dwarves around the fortress are calling Moldath the Beardless. You see, something rather strange I've noticed about this guy, besides his striking white hair, is the fact that he does not have a beard, which is absolutely freaking me out. And it has to be very unsettling to the other dwarves here as well. Necromancers, they're an odd sort. That much is sure. Regardless, glad to have you around, Beardless. By the way, he has received a promotion. He's no longer just our gatherer, he's now our manager as well and doing a damn fine job at it. And actually, moving on from him, you'll notice right next to him is Eral, the damned one woodcutter who was brought back from the dead. His friends call him the Silent, because he really just never seems to have anything to say, or is perhaps unable to speak. It's hard to tell, but I've been trying to keep an eye on him, and it doesn't seem like he has much. Most of Scorch Fountain's dwarves have at least something to say about day-to-day -day life. Also, I will note that despite his horrifying wounds, he's almost made a complete recovery and is now doing very well. No crutch, no limp, nothing. I mean, take a look at his wound treatment history. It's pretty extensive. It includes having a compound fracture of his skull repaired, which I've never seen accomplished before. I mean, the guy's undead, so what are you gonna do, kill him? But still, it's quite impressive, especially considering it was done by a fisher dwarf. <laughs> Yeah, a couple real characters here. I'm glad they're both fitting in so well. And you know what? I don't think these two would be doing so well without the help of our chief medical dwarf, slash Fisher Dwarf, Athel Dipsilver. She's an interesting character, and I've actually become quite fond of her. Having a quick look here, she's strong, but a bit clumsy. Two things you wouldn't think would help very much in a medical profession, but, I mean, the results speak for themselves. She does have a very good sense of the position of her own body and a sum of patience, which I do imagine helps a ton. One of the most interesting aspects I've found about this dwarf is that she personally finds maintaining decorum a silly, fumbling waste of time and finds the pursuit of skill mastery off-putting. But she also dreams of creating a great work of art, which is not possible without mastering a skill. And additionally, she also exhibits a refined politeness and is determined to keep the guiding rules of etiquette and decorum as if life itself depended on it. Of course, she is troubled by this natural tendency in herself since she finds dignified society to be stifling and silly when properly considered. Isn't that something? hell-bent on following the rules of society, yet deep down she knows it's all incredibly silly. Overall, she's a hard-working optimist who just wants peace for Scorch Fountain. A good dwarf. A dwarf who many call Fisher. A reminder of her humble beginnings. Keep up the good work. Yeah, we have a pretty solid group of dwarves here in Scorch Fountain, and it's thanks to them that this will be a strong fortress. But now that we've looked in on them, it's time to get down to business, dwarves. Let's get to it. Starting off small, down here by our beetles, you can see a dwarf putting together a bowyer's workshop. You'll notice over here on this nest box that we still have that one deceased female beetle. I figured we might as well put that kite into use, just sitting there now. And so I've ordered the production of 10 suits of chitin armor, and we're going to try to make 10 bows as well. You can't really make much out of chitin, but this will be better than nothing, for sure. Maybe we'll start training up a small bow dwarf squad. That'd be pretty handy, I think. We have to remember how dangerous this area is, with all the necromancers around, certainly. Yeah, that should all be done pretty soon. Up here to the north, at the eastern edge of the forge, the magma vent, that is, if we look down, you could see a small forge area. I figured it'd be for the best if we start actually doing something with the metal that we have. We don't have a lot, remember, but regardless, we have to get to work. Now, earlier I had kind of scoffed at the copper and silver that we have access to, but because I didn't see any iron, uh, we're probably going to have to make do for now at least. So I'm going to have the dwarves get to work smelting some of that stuff down, and then we can make some weapons. I'm thinking flails might be a good choice, but warhammers could be cool too. And you know, a lot of dwarves might not think that much of copper armor, but if you get a dwarf in a full masterwork set, I mean, it'll get the job done. Yeah, I'm keeping my hopes high in that regard. Also, can't forget that we can make brass as well. That might be very handy, for trading, of course. 
But that's enough talk of small business. Let's have a look over it this way. At the Smith, where we have begun digging out our fortress entrance. Starting right here, you can see over on the eastern side, we're kind of scooping out the wall, making it nice and rounded, you know? Gotta be nice and presentable when visitors come. Oh, hold up a second. Would you have a look at this? Ton, Beetlebane Igerstenthad, the legendary woodcrafter, has given birth to a girl. Very cool. You know, actually, I didn't think she was... Oh, right. I forgot her husband died. Ooh. Oh, dear. I guess Beetlebane must have been pregnant when her husband was killed a few months ago. Well, you should know, Beetlebane, that the fortress will always be behind you. You will not be alone in raising this child. You know what? This is a pretty monumental occasion, I'd say. And even though this little baby has not done a damn thing yet, we're gonna give her a nickname. I think Beetle Baby has a nice ring to it, don't you? I could certainly imagine that catching on. Welcome to Scorch Fountain and to the world, little Beetle Baby. You're now a small part of something very, very big. Good luck and may Acker watch over you. Anyways, yes. Back over here at our fortress entrance. You can see we're scooping out the mountainside, making it nice and rounded. And then at this level here is the top of the entrance tunnel, which will be three Z levels deep. One, two, three. Getting wider as it goes down. And then over at the left side, you can see the ramp that leads down. And I'm going to tell you this. This ramp goes down a long, long way. See that? Really far down. It's going to take us quite a while to dig down to where we want to be. Right here. Which is only a few Z levels above the first cavern layer. I figured that'd be handy just so we can dig out some holes down to this cavern layer if need be. Now remember our problem with water, there is no water up on the surface or in this first cavern layer. It would be for the best if we made our fortress down like near the second cavern layer, but I don't know, I think, I don't, I don't really want it that deep. So we're gonna come up with a system, I don't want to use a pump stack either. It's okay though, we're gonna, we're gonna come up with something and it's gonna work. Let's hope those aren't fateful words. But yeah, yeah, it's going. Just kind of tooling away at the fortress here. It's going to take a while, of course, but we're pretty much just starting with the, I'll, I'll say the bones of the fortress. Just trying to dig out some narrow tunnels just so we can connect all the rooms. Remember, we only have about a year left. Actually, it's much less than a year now. We just hit summer and I'd like to get bedrooms carved out at least bare minimum down in the fortress. If we could do that, then we'll be pretty okay anyways. Uh, oh dear. Hmm, a little bit of an accident here. It looks like a section of the cavern has collapsed. Well, let's see how this plays out. Ooh, that was nasty, okay. How you guys doing down here? Doing all right? Olan, doing fine. Bombrack, you good? Yeah, you're good. There's a dwarf. Be careful, please. Goodness gracious. <laughs> oh no, what is going on around here? Um. Oh, that could have been a bad one. Oh yeah. Yeah, Bombrack is not doing well. Bleeding all over the place. Looks like we might have to revise our mining plans here. Things don't seem to be going too, too well. Let's get the Necromancer on standby, huh? Just kidding, it's a joke, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, he's gonna be fine. Fisher's taking care of him already. Yeah, you're in good hands. Um, but yeah, mining's going pretty well, for the most part. Just a couple hiccups, bound to happen, really. Back over here in the fortress, and I'm starting to realize what a big problem it is to not have water. We can go down in the caverns and get water, so we do have it, but it can be very dangerous down there. That being said, we do have some tiny stagnant ponds up here on the surface, and I'm looking to make some use of those, believe it or not. And so I'm beginning construction on a well, just right here, and it's not going to be a glamorous thing at all. We've dug it a couple Z levels down just to right here, and I'm going to give the dwarves some buckets and have them collect water from those stagnant ponds and just dump it down here. It'll take a while, but it'll build up and eventually it'll be a nice source of water. Here's another interesting turn. It looks like we've received a petition for the construction of a guild hall for the Autumnal Guild, a farmer's guild that has many members here in Scorch Fountain. Well, we will definitely approve this, although really we don't have that much space for a guild hall, and so we'll just try to dig out a small one down here, beneath our residential level. It should get the job done. Shouldn't take too, too long either, I don't imagine. Also, if you look over at the side, you can see we're carving out an area for a prison as well, just in case. We haven't had any troublemakers yet, but if we do, We'll need somewhere to put them. Well, it looks like we have a couple more migrants here. Welcome aboard, you bastards. That's gonna take us up to 30 dwarves right there. Rather, 29, I guess. Close. Hey, now, having a little look over here, we can see some action. It looks like a giant cave toad came up from the caverns, but it was chased off and badly beaten by our horn beetles. I don't know if they're still chasing it. Let's, uh, let's watch. Following the toad. Eh, it looks to be moving away, doing its own thing. Yeah, that's right, get the hell out of here. Pretty handy, really. It's good to see those beetles pulling their weight. Speaking of which, down here there's another. It's a large rat being chased by a horn beetle. Oh yeah, look at that. The beetles chase these things right down. 
very aggressive. Oh, back over here at the fortress entrance, it looks like another section of cavern has collapsed. Damn dwarves, you gotta be careful, huh? Let's watch. How you guys doing, huh? Only slightly unconscious, they're fine. Uh, what the hell is this? There's a large rat here in our meeting hall, at the still actually, guzzling our drinks. That's obnoxious. It just drank down 30 units of alcohol. Why aren't you guys doing anything? What the hell? Um, can we get someone in here just real quick? Okay, there we go. That was Stinthad. Just beat the hell out of that rat. You never touch a dwarf's alcohol. Off limits. Constant activity in this fortress, I tell you. Looks like we've had another baby born, bringing us up to 30 dwarves exactly. Oh, over here, looks like we have another strange mood dwarf. Fab, our broker slash gatherer. They've claimed a craft dwarf workshop and they are off to collect their ingredients. Here's hoping they're successful. Good luck to you, you bastard. Oh, easy enough. Doesn't seem like they needed many things. We'll just give it a moment here. And there we have it. Fab Nilesu's tooth, the broker slash gatherer, has created the Lalgan Gif, a marble amulet. He claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor Ingiz Wind Stricken. Very neat. Let's have a look. Its name translates to Empire Squids, and it's worth 4,800. This is a marble amulet, all craft of ships of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion marble cabochons, a fairly plain artifact when you get down to it, but cherished nonetheless. This will be the second added to our trove, and we'll have to make sure to get it safely stored away in our meeting hall, next to that scepter. Yeah, things are chugging right along here in Scorch Fountain, going rather well. We're being nice and productive, and there's enough stuff going on where life is not becoming boring. Not at all, actually. Sometimes things can get a bit tedious, especially when you're just working, mining. But that does not seem to be the case around here. Not at all, actually. But we just have to keep hopes high that things don't get too interesting. <laughs> The enemy have come and are laying siege to Scorch Fountain. This is terrible. We are completely unprepared for anything like this. Hmm. Well, let's see what we have here. All I'm seeing so far is this one creature. A damned one. Just like Eral the Silent. Doesn't look to be a friendly sort. He has a bronze short sword. This is extremely bad. I don't think any of the dwarves in the fortress could safely fight this guy. Hell, he'd probably even rip the beetle to shreds. No use complaining though, we have to get right to work. First up, I've set up a burrow, which if you don't know is a safe zone where dwarves can go in case of an emergency and are not allowed to leave it, by the way. And that burrow is called the anvil because it is only in the anvil. Hopefully when the game unpauses, we can get everybody to run there in time. Now a couple of glaring problems I'm seeing is that, well, we don't have much water here in the fortress, which could definitely be a problem if we run out of alcohol. But that being said, we do have a little bit of water in here. It's not bad. And hopefully if this does end up being a full on siege, it'll last us a little while at least. Though that being said, over here, you can see our farmer's guild, which we just finished. Thankfully, it's pretty well appointed marble walls. You can see some tables and chairs in there as well as some cabinets and a farm plot where we were planning to start growing some underground crops. Not a lot, just kind of to amuse the farmers. But I think that plot's going to end up being very important. The thing is, is we need some seeds. There are none in the anvil right now. All of our seeds are out here right now in this one barrel. It's flashing blue because I count that as part of this burrow as well. I'm hoping somebody can just go and grab that barrel real quick and get it into the fortress. If they can do that, then we can grow nice underground crops. No problem whatsoever. It'll make things a lot more possible. The other problem is our beetles down here. As I said before, I feel like this zombie warrior is going to be quite an opponent. And I don't doubt that it could kill at least a couple of our beetles, something I don't want to have happen. So I'm hoping they can get into the anvil as well, but we'll have to see on that. Even if we do manage to get them inside on time, there's not gonna be much for them to eat, but that's a future problem. Okay, anyways, what do you think dwarves, you ready? The burrow is activated. Let's see how this plays out. Huh, well, that's weird. It looks like that zombie just left. I guess? <laughs> that works for us, certainly. Okay, okay, false alarm. Or not, I guess. The dead walk, hide while you still can. Oh no. Okay. Oh, there we go. I don't know why we just got two different sieges like that. This doesn't make much sense. But the second one looks a lot worse. A lot worse. Seeing a lot of humans, human zombies. All armed, armored. Yeah, that's an ugly force. There's no way we could handle any of that at all. You know what? Let's uh, let's have a look here for a second. Maybe it's just a scouting force. Perhaps they'll leave like that last guy. And no, no, they are certainly not. Moving straight in. Not good. All right, dwarves, let's go. Let's go get to the fortress. Hurry it up. Hoping the miners can get back in time. 
some of them might still be far down there. If they are, they're going to be in some serious trouble coming up. Trying to keep an eye on these zombies. Luckily, they move pretty slow, compared to our dwarves anyways. I really had my hopes up we can get this barrel, but it doesn't look like anybody's grabbing it. Come on, quit taking one seed out at a time, damn it. Take the whole barrel. Oh, you dumb dwarves. Ooh, 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 okay, get back in the fortress. Get to the fortress, you idiot. All right, what do you think? Is everyone in? Because I'm locking her up. Whew, okay. Well, guess we're having ourselves a little bit of a lockdown here. A damn shame. We were doing so well. Oh, let's have a look here for a half second. <laughs> this is an interesting turn. It looks like a magma crab came out of the volcano vent. Scared out by these zombies, perhaps? Normally they don't leave the magma, but this one came running out into this field here, and I guess was killed by the zombies. But not before starting a fire here. Huh. Is that gonna work in our favor? I guess we'll find out soon enough. Let's watch how this plays out. Well, the fire is certainly spreading, but the zombies are moving away. Very interesting. Hmm, spreading very quickly, actually. I'm wondering what the chances are that this will incinerate those damn things. Probably not good, seeing as how there's one standing amongst that scorched carnage out there. That would have been pretty cool, too. Though this gives me an idea. All you need is one magma crab, huh, to start an inferno like this. There are goblins in the area. What do you suppose would happen if we lit up the area like this when goblins were here? I know for a fact they wouldn't stand much of a chance against this. Zombies as undead creatures might have some resistance to fire. I imagine it's the case. But those goblins would burn up real nice. Humans, too. Those tall bastards aren't really our friends, either. Oh man, that's pretty cool. You see when I hit those workshops there, they just kind of explode into flames. Ooh, yeah. That's really cool. Hmm, anyways. Yep, dwarves, looks like we're gonna be locked up inside the anvil for quite some time, unfortunately. But we can make the best of it. Not gonna be a big deal. I'm sure when the caravans come by in autumn, they'll see our mountain here kind of engulfed by flames and zombies. And they'll send word back to the mountain home that we're not quite ready for more migrants yet. I'm really hoping anyways, because we, you know, it's not, it's not safe here. Not safe at all. And don't go thinking that just because we're locked up, it's time to relax. Not at all. No sitting on your laurels, dwarves. We have a lot of work to do still. Thankfully, the anvil is fairly well appointed, and we pretty much have everything we need in place. Having a look down here, at the farmer guild level, you can see we've dug it out quite a bit around the area, just so we could let some moss grow in this dirt. Those beetles have to eat something, you know? You'll also notice that we made a couple of farm plots here, thankfully, before we were locked up. And I believe we can actually grow some stuff down here. I think we do have some seeds, I think. If not, then I'm hoping some plants will grow in this soil here, just kind of naturally. Things might end up getting a little dicey, but we're good for now. Regardless, if you have a look over in here, you can see Moldath, the Beardless, our necromancer, who curiously is leading a dying demonstration. Kind of ironic that this necromancer should be teaching these dwarves how to die. Comedic misunderstandings all around, I'm sure. <laughs> no, dying, dying. You're good, don't worry about it. I will note that Moldath the Beardless is a legendary dyer. It's pretty cool to see him trying to impart some of that knowledge onto the other farmers. Keep it up, you beardless bastard. Oh, and another thing I would like to point out is up here in our temple. You could see some coins that we made, just scattered around on the floor here. I haven't had a look at them yet, so let's do that just for the hell of it. This here is a stack of 500 Kulet Gashka's 1165 brass coins. Brass coins. I'd like to make that kind of our trademark metal here. This is the brass currency of Kulak Gashkaz from the year 1165. On the front of the coin is an image of thick crescents, and on the coin's back is a rendition of the National Arrow, an exceptionally designed image of a capuchin man. The image is, of course, the symbol of the Abbey of Proliferation, our civilization. That's not so bad. We have the iconic National Arrow, the capuchin man, as well as a pair of thick crescents. Just kind of a nice pattern, I guess, on that. Yeah, yeah, that definitely works. I'm glad we were able to start a stockpile of these things. Might as well start now, right? But yeah, other than that, things are going fairly well here in the fortress. But here's something. It looks like S.H.I.E.L.D., or Stinthad, our expedition leader, has entered a strange mood, and has even claimed a mason's workshop. Although, here's a problem. It looks like he doesn't have what he needs for it. Now, I know you're looking in this area right here, and it's not a place I've shown off yet, but we'll get to it soon enough. Right now, we have to worry about getting this guy's materials. Shining gems. We can cut some gems for him easily enough. Stones are not a problem at all. Trees, that is where the problem arises. We do not have any lumber down here. Well, here's something. Looking down in the tunnels here, you can see the undead have migrated to fresh hunting grounds. They're down here right now hunting down some animals, and they've already killed quite a few of them. 
I did do a head count as well, and they are all down here currently. So I'm thinking we can maybe throw a floor over this stairway right here. That should do the trick. If we can get that in place, then the surface is ours once more. This is the only access point down to the tunnels currently. Let's give it a go and hope those zombies don't come rushing back up. Okay, the door is unlocked. Let's see here. It looks like the beardless is the one going out. The brave bastard. Oh, and he's really running too. Wonderful. Done deal. Good job, Moldath. That really solves our problem right there. Okay, I guess we can turn off the burrow and we can get back to work. Just as easy as that. We can't go down in the tunnels for now, but that's no biggie. It's pretty dangerous down there anyways. And more importantly, Stinthad can continue his artifact. Thankfully. Heading out, getting some lumber right now. And I believe he's already gotten everything else he needs. Not 100% on that though. And there he goes. The artifact has begun. Good job, shield. Let's see what he comes out with. And there we have it. Stinthad Shield Sodelazin, the stone worker, has created Canmish Them, a daysite table. He claims it as a family heirloom. Wonderful, let's have a look. Its name translates to the Taupe Scholars, and it's worth 33,000. Not too shabby at all, really. This is a daysite table. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with table cut indigo tourmalines and encircled with bands of rectangular daysite cabochons. This object menaces with spikes of ash. Wonderful. A really nice piece. Another very simple artifact, but it's going to get the job done, that's for sure. And you know what? I think we're going to put this in his bedroom. Might as well, right? He did claim it as a family heirloom after all. Oh, right. Um, I guess I forgot how small these bedrooms are. That's pretty tiny. Eh, no matter. I'm sure he still wants it in there, even though he'll have to squeeze past it every single time he enters his bedroom. There we go. Yeah, that looks real nice. Good job, buddy. And having a look here, he considers himself to have a royal bedroom now. Of course, it makes perfect sense. Fit for a king. Well, I really am glad he likes his new bedroom, and I'm certainly happy he didn't end up going insane. And, oh, right, this area down here. I haven't shown this to you yet, have I? Well, I guess I should, huh? <sighs> there we have it. Scorch Fountain proper. Still have a bit to go, but we're getting it done. Yeah, we've been working away down here ever since we were first locked up inside the anvil. We made a little access tunnel down over here. All we had to really do was just dig down to this level and start planning. We couldn't get down through the main hallway, but if we made a little access tunnel, then we're good to go, pretty much. Things are going relatively well. You can see it's going to be incredibly spacious down here. I was really hoping to make a lot of the rooms multiple Z levels tall, because I tend to like a nice spacious chamber. Maybe not the bedrooms, but the hallways, definitely. But I figured for now we should just start on the basics. The bedrooms, mostly. That's what these clusters are. Each of these little leaf shapes is a cluster of 10 bedrooms, each of which is incredibly spacious. Because I want some happy dwarves in this fortress. And not just happy dwarves, I really want some very happy dwarves. It'll be worth it. You'll see. And if you look down this way here, you can see we were just carving out these narrow little tunnels, like I said we were going to do. But just recently, I've decided to just carve out the entire thing. It's not going to take that long. What's going to take a long time is smoothing it all. Not really looking forward to that, but it's fine. Again, not really done planning the whole thing yet either. We're getting it carved out, which is easy enough. Like up here to the north, we have this giant lima bean shape, and I'm hoping to make that the forge area. I know this is all unnecessarily huge, but isn't it necessary? I mean, come on. We don't want to live in some dinky fortress. This is Scorch Fountain, damn it. Future home to monumental glory. Yeah, I think the fortress's layout should reflect that, don't you? Absolutely. Down over this way here, we have this little egg shape. And you know, I don't really have a good plan for that quite yet. I was thinking of making some sweets or something for the nobility, perhaps? We don't really have a lot of area to play around with right here. Eh, still trying to get that sorted out. And then over here in the west, we have the winding entryway, which connects up to that entryway that leads to the surface. Now, I've got big plans for this, and there is a reason for this wavy layout, but we'll touch on that in the future. It still has a ways to go. For now, we're going to be fine just carving out this area, just piece by piece, getting it all smoothed up, a process that looks to be speeding up a little bit, thanks to these dwarves' skill improving. And of course, we're also going to be continuing work up here on the surface. Now, having a look at the day, it is the 21st of Obsidian, 1165 late winter, which means that yet another year is coming to a close. And you know what that means. Because the surface is ours once more, I don't think we have a reason to close our gates to migrants anymore. Kind of unfortunate, really. But I think we should prepare for that next year. And when that happens, things are going to get a little crazy around here, I'm thinking. But that's fine. This fortress can really use some life injected into it. And there we are. Spring has arrived. 
It is now the 1st of Granite 1166, the very beginning of our third year. And I have the distinct feeling that this year things are really going to get kicked up a notch. But whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, well, kind of hard to say. All I know is that we can expect to see a whole lot more dwarves, a whole lot more action, and unfortunately at this point I don't doubt that we'll see more sieges from here on out. As the majestic Scorch Fountain comes into our own, we would do well to keep on our toes, dwarves. Hey, bearded bastards. Here at the end of the episode once more to just chat about some stuff that occurred. It was another very interesting episode and there were some pretty unexpected things that happened. Uh, for one, well, the necromancer there, the beardless. What's up with that? I've never seen a beardless male dwarf before. Truly bizarre. Like, if anybody knows what's up with that, please let me know. I showed his description off in the video. There's no beard. And like, that's actually freaking me out. I don't know. That's a weird one. Plus, uh, Beetle Baby. What are the chances of that, huh? That Beetle Bane there has already had several very interesting events kind of centering around her. She was able to kill two horn beetles, avenge her fallen husband, created the fortress's first artifact, and also gave birth to the fortress's first child. That really is something. You know, I've covered this all before, but I don't know, it's just interesting to see a dwarf take front row center like that. With 30 dwarves in the fortress, what are the chances so many things are going to happen to this one? That's Dinthad too. I mean, we've had three artifacts created in the fortress. What are the chances that he would make one? I swear, sometimes it seems like the game knows what dwarves you're interested in and kind of focuses on them somehow. It's weird. Now onto some more technical aspects. Flails. I mentioned them earlier in the episode. That's something else that was modded in. Not really like modded, I mean, flails are already in the game. Just kind of a tweak, really. Normally dwarves can't make them. Oh, and bows too, actually. Normally dwarves can't make straight up bows. Crossbows, yes, but not bows. I figured, what the hell, why not? Might be fun. Back to flails, a lot of people have a problem with those things. Just like how realistic they are. Historical accuracy and stuff, meh, nonsense. They're cool as hell. That's kind of what I'm focusing on. <laughs> I've always been a big fan of the flail. I'm not too sure how well they actually perform in combat, but nah, I guess it doesn't matter that much. We're gonna go for it. I'd like to see some heavy usage of the flail as Scorch Fountain goes on. And once more, I'm gonna be putting that information down in the description below if you wanna add flails into your game, or any weapon for that matter. It's pretty easy. Also, the world gen info. I realized I didn't put it in that last episode, and that's because the description can only be so long on YouTube videos, so I'll put it on this one here. Not the world seed, mind you. You're not going to get a copy of this exact world. Sorry. I'm just giving you the information so that if you want to create a world similar to this one, you can. But I don't really want people picking through this exact world before I get a chance to, you know? That could get a little annoying. Now, let's see, trying to think if there's anything else I want to touch on, and mm, not getting much. And so, I think that's gonna about do it. Once again, my bearded bastards, I really do thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I certainly hope to see you next time here in Athlestizafon, Scorch Fountain. And until then, my bearded bastards. Oops.